Praise the Lord again. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We welcome you to the Bible Church of Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. We give God praise. We give God glory. Hallelujah. We worship Jesus. Hallelujah. We magnify the true and the living God. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord for he is good. His mercy, hallelujah, endureth forever. Hallelujah. Let's worship. Hallelujah. Let's praise him. Hallelujah. We come to rejoice today, hallelujah, because the Lord is good, hallelujah. Oh, we praise you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. We enter into your gates with thanksgiving, Lord. We enter into your courts with praise. Oh, we worship you today, God. We magnify your name, Jesus. Oh, we bless you. We praise you. We lift you up, Jesus. We glorify you, Jesus. We magnify you, Jesus. Jesus, because you've been good, Lord, we give you praise, God. We give you praise. We give you praise, God. Oh, magnify Hallelujah. him. Bless his name. Bless his name. Oh, he's worthy. He's wonderful. He's magnificent. He's righteous. Oh, we praise him. We glorify him. We adore him. Oh, just give him praise. Give Hallelujah. him thanks. Give him glory. Hallelujah. Worship him. Thank we come Jesus. to magnify him. Hallelujah. We come to bless Glory him. To we name. come Hallelujah. to lift him up. He's Thank worthy. You, He's worthy. You, He's Jesus. worthy. Bless He's worthy. Jesus bless is worthy. Jesus Wonderful. is worthy. Wonderful. He's worthy Jesus. to be praised. We oh, we thank Hallelujah. him. Oh, just thank, thank him you. for his goodness. Yes. Thank him for his mercy. Thank him for his grace. Hallelujah. Thank him for allowing you to see another oh, day. Bless Hallelujah. Bless you. We bless you. We praise you, Jesus. Worthy. We glorify you, Jesus. Worthy You're so wonderful, praised, God. God. You're so wonderful, God. Thank You're so Jesus. wonderful, Savior. We serve a good yes. God. We serve a wonderful God. God. We serve a mighty God. He's excellent. Father. He's glorious. He's righteous. Peace, oh He's the great I am. Thank He's you, the beautiful Rose of Sharon. Yes. He's a wonderful Savior. Glory, oh, we give glory, him thanks today. Glory, Just glory. give thanks with a grateful Hallelujah. heart. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Hallelujah. Are you grateful today? Are you grateful to be in the Hallelujah. land of the living? Clothe in your right mind. Oh, we Thank praise you, Jesus. you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. Matchless Savior, we give you praise, God. We thank you. We thank you. Hallelujah. We thank you. We thank you. Thank you Hallelujah. Jesus. He's worthy. Thank He's you. worthy. He's worthy. Jesus is worthy. Mighty God. Mighty Wonderful God. counselor. Mighty, God. Mighty Savior. Yes. He's good. Hallelujah. Thank you. For the Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silent before him. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep Hallelujah. Are you ready to praise the Lord? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You, Are you ready to praise Jesus? Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. He's so good. Hallelujah. He's so wonderful. Yeah. He's so mighty. Hallelujah. You, He's so Lord. excellent. We give him praise. Hallelujah. You, and we glorify his name. You know the Lord is great. Hallelujah. You know the Lord is wonderful. Hallelujah. We come to bless him. We come to praise him, to lift his name on high because he's wonderful. Lord, I'll praise you for the rest of my life. I'll adore and magnify your name. Everything. Oh! 
He's great and he's greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. We bless him. We worship him. Hallelujah. We magnify Jesus. We bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Because he's wonderful. Hallelujah. Who can stand against the Lord? No one can because the victory, it belongs to Jesus. Do you have the victory today? Do you have the victory today? Shout hallelujah. I have the victory. Hallelujah. He's wonderful. Mighty God. Hallelujah. As we prepare ourselves to worship, we're going to ask our minister, Tommy Robinson, just to prepare himself to take the church to the throne of grace. Amen. As we sing our praise and worship song unto the Lord. against the Lord. No one can and no one will. Oh, who can stand against the King? No one can and no one will. Oh, Victory belongs to him. Oh, 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 victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to him. If you'll agree, sing with me. Say, who can stand? Who can stand against the Lord? No one can. And no one will. No one will. No. Say it again. Who can stand? Who can stand against the king? No one can. No one can. No one will. No one will. Oh. 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 That it belongs to him. Victory belongs to Jesus. Said it belongs to him. Who can stand against the Lord? I'm telling you, no one can. No one can. And no one will. No one yeah. will. Who can stand against the king? Who can stand against the king? No one can. No one can. And no one will. No one will. Did 
belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs and because to we're tied to him, it belongs to us. Say, oh. the music. Victory belongs Say it. With, cry out from your heart. Say, oh, 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 oh. Victory belongs. Victory belongs I know to it Jesus. belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs Say, to oh, 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 oh. Victory belongs to him. Last time. Victory belongs to him. Victory belongs to him. Jesus, victory belongs to him. Oh, oh, victory belongs to Jesus, victory belongs to him. Jesus, 
victory belongs to him. Oh. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, Jesus. Victory is yours. Victory is yours, oh God. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, Jesus. Hallelujah. Victory is yours. Oh, God. Lord, we are more than victorious in you, oh God. Oh, Lord Jesus, I thank you. Lord, I thank you for allowing me to be home on my time. Oh, Lord, I thank you, Jesus. Oh, God, I thank you. Lord, I thank you for allowing us to be home one more time. Oh, God. Lord Jesus, I thank you for this day. Lord Jesus, many times I've heard Bishop say, you don't know what's out there. I've heard people go have travel, go in different places and come back home and says, you don't know what you have here. And I know what they're talking about now. I know what they're talking about now. You don't know what you have here. Lord, I thank you for this day. This glorious day in you, oh God. A day that you have made. And we will and we shall and we are going to rejoice in you, oh God. Lord, I thank you. I praise you, oh Lord. I lift you up and magnify your name. For you are all worthy of everything, oh God. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, O oh Lord, is you, O oh God. You, O oh God, have made heaven and earth and each and every one of us, O oh God. Lord, you are concerned about each and every little detail in our lives. And we need to learn to surrender and give it all to you, O oh God. Amen. To give it all to you, O oh God, for you, the alpha and the maker, the beginning and the end, O oh God. You are the author of our faith, O oh God. You're in control over everything. Let us not forget the fact, despite what's happening around us, oh God, you are still in control. And we must remember, though we may not know what's happening tomorrow, what's going to happen tomorrow, but we know who holds tomorrow, and we know who holds our hand. Lord, let us hold tight to your hand, oh God. So many things have happened we never even imagined we never even cross our mind would have happened. But Lord, you know all things. Many people who thought they would be here today are not here today. But you allow us to be here, God. You are in control over everything. And we need to yield our vessel unto you, O oh God, and rest in you. Let us lay down before your feet, O oh God, and be partaker of everything that you have of us this day, O oh God. Lord, we lift up this day before you. We want to thank you, Lord, for each and everything that has taken place so far in the service, oh God. We want to thank you, Lord, for the vision, oh God, that you've given Bishop Dairu, oh God, as he's taken the church to a whole nother level, oh God. Hallelujah. We thank you, Jesus, for the young man. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, you had first given the vision to Bishop Roy Bryan Sr. And we give an honor to him this day, oh God. We thank you for our father in the gospel, oh God. You have called him home, oh God, for he's done his part. But that doesn't mean that the work is finished. We still have hours to do. Bless us, oh God, to yield closer to you, oh God. To be in tune with the spirit. As you continue to take the Bible Church of Christ further into other things of God, let us take our hands out of our pockets and get busy with the work that you have called us to do, oh God. 
stir up, oh God, the spirit in us, oh God, that may have been laying dormant over the years for anything that we have had experience, oh God. Let us not look at the past, oh God, because we're going to trip over the future if we keep looking at the past, oh God. Wash us, cleanse us, oh God. Erase all the things that have happened in the past that was not good, oh God. And let us look forward, oh God, to a refreshing and a renewing in you. A renewing in you, oh God. A renewing in you, oh God. Many of us have been hurt. Many of the things have experienced in the past, oh God. But Lord, you said you can wipe away your tears. Not just wipe away the tears that's falling out, but wipe away all of the pain and the hurt and everything we experienced. That we can be a renewed person in you. That we can go forth in you, oh God, and do whatever it is that you've called us to do, oh God. So that when we stand before you on that day, oh God, that we will hear the words, well done, thy good and faithful servant. This should be our desire, oh Lord. Help us to be, let this be our desire in each and every person under the sound of my voice. Whether they have a title, whether they are part of auxiliary, whatever it is, let this be our desire that we want to see you and hear those words, oh God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Lord, we thank you. We thank you, oh God. Oh, Lord, I thank you, oh God. Ah, solo, boshanda, sanda. I thank you, Jesus. I thank you, oh God. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for my family here. I thank you, Lord, for allowing me to be here one more time to see them again, oh God. To be in the presence, oh Lord. It is such a wonderful thing, oh God. And so such a wonderful thing, oh God. And we pray you continue to move mightily as you've done in the past, oh God. Move mightily, strengthen each and every one, oh God. Comfort us, oh God. Strengthen us, oh God. Help us to go strong in you, oh God. Let the one number one agenda in our life is to be closer to you, to develop a strong relationship with you, oh God. Wash us on your blood, oh God. Remove anything, oh God, that have happened over the years, oh God. We've kind of fallen away a little bit from you, oh God. Lord, the enemy has ways of throwing little things in our ways to block us from going towards the goal that you have set for us, oh God. Open up our eyes to see the works of the enemy. That we may renounce it. That we may rebuke it. And that we may see the road that you would desire for us to travel down, oh God. Let us not look to the left or to the right, but let's look at that cross that's bearing down to the end of the road that we may follow by. Do we may get there, God? Let us not have excuses. Let us not complain. Let us not murmur. But let us focus on the joy of the Lord. Because it's the joy of the Lord that is our strength. And let no one Take that joy away from us, oh God. Let us build up the strength in us, oh God. Let the joy of the Lord continue to be with us, oh God. Doesn't mean you're going to be walking around laughing and giggling all of the time. But that when hard times come, oh God, you are with us because you said in your word, you'll never leave us nor forsake us. And that's what we have to hold on to. You'll never leave us. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because thou art with me. And I thank you, God. And that is to each and every one of us. We thank you, Lord. That is for each and every one of us, oh God. So, Lord, I yield this day to you, oh God. This is a glorious day, oh God. First of all, we're looking to be fed from heaven, oh God. Lord, there's some things the natural food can't not do. We need spiritual God, spiritual food, oh Lord. For you said man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Lord, we're looking for you this day to feed us, oh God. Feed us, oh God. We have our minds open, our ears to hear, oh God. Give us what you have of us this day, oh God. And we thank you for it all, oh Lord. And we thank you, Lord, for this glorious day that we give an opportunity to honor our Father this day. We thank you, Lord, for all that's going to take place later on. For the co-naming of the street. The people may know the man of God that was on this block. Because guess what, Lord? 
I know that this block is blessed because of the Bible Church of Christ. Anything may happen every else in the Bronx, but this block is anointed because of the Bible Church of Christ. And we thank you, Lord, for that. And we cannot lose sight of that. Let us not lose sight of who we are in you. And we thank you for all these many blessings. We ask it in no other name but in the precious and wonderful name of Jesus Christ. Let the church say amen. 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 to him oh, oh, oh victory belongs to Jesus victory belongs to him oh, oh, oh victory belongs to Jesus Victory belongs to him. Lift your voice and say, oh. Oh, 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 victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to him. Deliver. He will deal in. He's a provider. We find our victory. And he's forever victorious. And forever we win. to him. One more time. Oh, 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 victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to him. Let's praise him. I've got the victory. Make it personal. I've got the victory. In spite of what the traps, the traps the enemy may set, I have the victory. Do you have the victory? Victory in Jesus, the greatest conqueror. He's the banner that flies over you. He's Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Tiskanu, Jehovah Shalom, Jehovah Nisi. He is our banner, hallelujah. There's a banner that flies over us today and his name is Jesus. He is the King of Kings. He is the Lord of Lords. He is the great conqueror. Hallelujah. There is no force greater than that of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. We bless you, Jesus. We magnify you, Jesus. We give you praise, Jesus, for being our king, for being our Lord of Lords, for being our shepherd, 
Hallelujah. We praise you and we worship him today. He's so holy, hallelujah. The angels cry, holy, 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 hallelujah. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. He's mighty, he's mighty, he's mighty, hallelujah. He's mighty, glory to God. You're mighty and you're great, Jesus. And we bless you, Jesus. We thank you for being in our midst, Jesus. We thank you for being in our midst, Jesus. We thank you for being in our midst, Jesus. Let your glory fill this temple. Let your glory, hallelujah. Let the glory, hallelujah. Let the glory of the Lord fill your temple. Hallelujah. Jesus, we praise you. Jesus, we worship you. We glorify your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Glory and honor. Glory and honor belong to you, Jesus. Victory belongs to you, Jesus. We put our hope and our trust in you, Jesus. Because the victory, hallelujah, belongs to our Savior, Jesus. Hallelujah. You may be seated. We thank God, hallelujah, for our minister, Tommy Robinson, taking the church to the throne of grace, coming all the way from Georgia, hallelujah. He's back home, hallelujah, giving God glory, giving him praise, hallelujah. And we thank God for our deaconess, Emily Robinson, hallelujah, hallelujah. We glorify God for them for their labor in the vineyard. We praise the Lord and we bless him on this afternoon. Amen. 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 Once again, we welcome all of our guests, our visitors, friends, family, saints, brothers, sisters. Hallelujah. In the Lord, we thank God. Amen. At this time, we're going to call forth our pastor, our Bishop Daru Bryan. Amen. He's going to deliver the word of God unto us. Let us please stand and give God some glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The glory is God's. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. He's worthy of the praise. He's worthy of all the glory. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. If we could just continue to worship him just a little while longer. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to you, Lord. Glory to you, God. We bless you, oh God, and we praise you. We magnify you, oh God. We lift up the name of Jesus. Have your way, Holy Spirit. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. Have your way in this house. It is Jesus that has preeminence in this place. For it's written, his house should be called a house of prayer. Thank you, Jesus. To you belong all glory, all power and authority. Lord, we thank you. We thank you for showing up in this house today. We thank you, oh God, because your son walked into this room. We thank you, Jesus, for residing with us, oh Lord. And for what you're going to do in our midst on this day. We thank you, oh God, for the unadulterated word. Speak unto our soul, oh God. To our heart and our mind as we continue to glorify thee. Save the one that need to be saved today, O oh Lord. Filling them with your precious Holy Spirit. Rekindle the flame in the one who seems to be in a valley of indecision. 
and continue to encourage those of us who have put our hand to the plow and have not looked back. Allow your word to be meat unto those of us of age and allow it to be milk to those who are still yet babes that we grow in grace together and collectively as we represent your body, O oh Lord Jesus. And we continue to give you praise in Jesus Christ's holy name. Satan, you have no part nor in this matter. You are already defeated. You are our adversary, our opponent, and you are defeated because victory belongs to Jesus. The blood is always victorious. Father, we thank you for the blood. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, our Savior, the only potentate, the only mediator between man and God, we say, speak, Lord, your servants hear with thee. In Jesus' name, let the church say amen. 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 Please greet your brother and sister. Can you please greet someone before you have a seat? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. For it's written that the Lord's house should be called a house of prayer. Speaking of prayer, we thank God once again for Minister Tommy Robinson. Amen. Amen. Sir, you've been missed. <laughs> We're glad you're here in our presence today. Amen. We thank God for all of our ministers. Amen. Also, Elder Monica Hope, we thank God for you. Elder Robinson. Deaconess Emily Robinson, she's a minister also. <laughs> and all of the ministers of the Bible Church of Christ organization. We also want to thank God for Minister Abraham Jones. He's here somewhere. And Sister Daria. The woman of God that knows how to usher in the presence of God, even in a dry place. <laughs> Amen. We just thank God because it takes all of us collectively. Thank God for each and every one of you that press your way here today. You're the reason why the service is moving as it is. Your presence, your being here. So we thank God for each and every one of you, whether you know the Lord or even if you don't. But before you leave here today, you will know who Jesus is. But we know he is the author and he's the finisher of our faith. He's the second person in the Godhead, what we call the Trinity. For the Bible said that three that bear record in heaven, we have the Father, who is God himself, the Word, who is Jesus Christ, and then the Holy Ghost. These three are one. We thank God for the Godhead. The Bible says at one point we see how God moved in the pages of our Old Testament. And then Jesus says that my Father worked hitherto, now I work. But then Jesus says, expedient that I go away so that the Holy Ghost, who is the Comforter, he will come. And there are things that he's going to teach you that I can't even share with you right now. He said, because you cannot even bear it. You see how they work together. I know a lot of times we want to give Satan credit because Jesus says that his kingdom is not divided. 
But I want you to know there's no division in Christ. There's no division in the Godhead. There shouldn't be no division in his kingdom. But what happened, there are times that we find ourselves warring with one another. And these things should not be. The body of Christ goes way beyond just the doors of this edifice. The body of Christ is all throughout the nation and throughout the world. Those who know the name of Jesus as Lord and as Savior. There is no other name by which men can be saved. Only by the name of Jesus Christ the righteous. <laughs> Harry Krishna can't do it for you. Buddha can't do it for you. Muhammad cannot do it for you. There's only one way to God and that way is Christ Jesus. You can try to circumvent him as long as you want, but it won't work. But I learned to surrender and say, Lord, here am I, your servant. How many of you made up your mind that you're going to live for Christ? That you want to give him your entire heart, your mind, your soul, and all your strength? Because you recognize him as Lord, as Messiah, as Christos. The Christ, the anointed one of the Father, the one that possessed the oil, the one that carries the Christmas. He's everything to me. In him, the pastor Paul said, I move and I have my being. Without him, I was nothing. But through Christ, I can do all things because of Christ Jesus that is in us. So therefore, we continue to press towards that prize of that mark, of that high calling. There's a high calling in him. If you've heard the word of the prayer that went forth, it's not a season for us to get lackadaisical. It's not a season for us to sit on our hands. Or like the one who had the maid and she says, I don't do windows because that's somebody else's job. Now, we all got to put our hand to the work of the ministry. It don't matter if you've been saved for 30 decades, if it were possible. I'm being a little facetious. Or whether you just come to the knowledge of Christ last week, the Lord know how to do a speedy work. The Bible lets us know that was in the case of the Apostle Paul. What happened? The scripture let us know. He said immediately, straightway, he preached Christ Jesus. He didn't go and preach the Torah. He didn't go and preach legalism. But he preached Christ. Although it may appear that it was foolishness unto those who were Greeks. It may have been a stumbling block unto those who were Jews. Because even today in this city, there are many Jews that say when you come to these public functions, you can't pray in the name of Jesus Christ. But I beg to differ. We got to take a stand. And speak truth to power. We can't be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. If we're ashamed of him, he'll be ashamed of us before the Father. But I know him. The word said to know him and the power of his resurrection. Because he got up, that's why he has victory. When he got up, he gave you and I victory today. We don't have to walk dismayed and in fear, in a valley of uncertainty. But we cling closer to the cross because in the cross is where our power remains. It's not about lesson plans, blessing plans. It's not about financial prosperity. But we're the preachers that just preach Jesus Christ. Like Philip when he went into Samaria. He preached Christ. And when he preached Jesus, what happened? The Bible said those that were possessed with demonic spirits, they began to be liberated. The shackles fell off. The chains, the fatter. You talking about a people who didn't even have the Holy Ghost, but yet got deliverance. Because Christ was preached. Those who were dealing with infirmities, the Bible said they were healed. How is it that they were healed? Because of the stripes of Jesus Christ. There are many of you in this place 
who've experienced the miraculous power of God's healing because the gospel was preached. You didn't have to wait for a prayer line. All you had to do was hear the word. There's a melody in the name of Jesus. That every part of my being has to respond to it. Every molecule has to respond to it. Every cell in my body has to respond to the name that is above all names. Jesus Christ, the Lord's anointed. As I think about the scripture, I want to turn briefly to the book of Galatians. Now, for someone, if this is your first time, you would have said, oh, I thought he was done. As Bishop Roy Bryant Sr. would say, you don't mind if I take my time. There was always that one person that said, take your time, Pastor. And everybody looking at them like, really? It's already been two hours. But we'll do this rather expeditiously. We'll go through the scriptures here in the book of Galatians. We want to look primarily at the sixth chapter. I say primarily because sometimes the Lord will have me start here and we'll work our way there. But the essence of the message, we are brother's keeper. When our brother is overtaken in a fault, we have to know how to restore such a one in the right spirit. Therefore, when we think about restore, I want you to consider restoration. There's something that God is doing in our midst. I don't know if you recognize it, if you're sensitive enough in the spirit to identify it, to discern. There's going to be a heavy migration of folk coming back into this ministry. Whatever happened in the past, let it stay in the past so that we can move forward according to prophecy. Because there's a work that God is going to allow to take place through this edifice, through this ministry as a whole, that it's going to turn this city upside down. But you have to put your differences aside. And let Christ be forefront. Paul is writing to these who are called Gauls, the place of Galatia. Some looked at them as barbarians, but yet they had received the gospel. The gospel was deposited in them. But somewhere along the line, they found themselves straddling the fence and some just avoiding the gospel altogether. The Bible tells us in the first chapter that Paul says, I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that have called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. When we think about the gospel, we consider it being good news, the glad tidings of Jesus Christ. How even though this world was on a decline because of the sinful Adamic nature because of the depravity of humankind, but yet God had a solution. God had an antidote, a vaccine, a cure for a man's ailment in the person of Jesus, who was obedient even unto the cross, knowing the agony that would be there at the cross. But yet he says, not my will, but thy will be done. That needs to be a part of our vocabulary. Lord, not my will, but your will be done. Lord, I think I would have done it this way. No, not my will, but your will be done. The scripture goes on to tell us that Paul said you move to another God. Like if there was another antidote, if there was another glad tidings, and he said, and there is not another. The word tells us in chapter 1. On verse 7, he says, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. 
Watch out for that spirit of perversion. Connected with the spirit of heresy. You find them working together. False doctrine. Spirit of deception. The Bible tells us in Timothy that there will be those that will depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. In other words, the teachings of demonic influence and spirits. We see that happening right here in this passage. Because he said, you come perverting the gospel of Christ. He said, but though we or an angel from heaven come preaching another gospel unto you, what are you supposed to do? You're not supposed to receive it. You're supposed to reject it. You ought to view that as being something that is cursed of God. A word they used to describe a cursed thing was anathema. He says, therefore, I don't care even if we come preaching. You see how he included himself with that. Because we have to remind ourselves sometimes that no man is beyond temptation. No man is beyond a walking and falling into sin. When you understand that, you'll be more compassionate to people when they mess up or when they miss them all, or when they trespass or transgress. But as long as you keep thinking that you got it all together and that you have no problems, then what will happen, you'll always look down on people and see their fault instead of seeing their needs. We were strategically placed on this block in this community because there was a need. Jesus said, I had needs to go through Morris Avenue. Someone need to hear the gospel because there's been too much perversion on these streets. So therefore, we see here in the scripture, he said, whether we or even an angel from heaven, a holy watcher that was in heaven, a divine being from heaven, come preaching another gospel. Someone said, how can a divine being do such a thing? Do you know that Satan, when he was in heaven, was called Lucifer, the light bearer? He was considered an anointed cherub covering the mercy seat. Oh, he was there in the very presence of God. But got exalted and lifted up in pride. And as a result of that, God had to kick him out of heaven. You don't want God to kick you out. Because those doors that God shut, no man can open. But yet, those doors that God opened, can no man shut. There is no man, there is no demon that can interfere with the blessings God has for you. Walking around here with your head down, talking about they blocking my blessing. <laughs> you don't know your word. Search the scriptures. And when you think you have eternal life, they are they that testify of thee. The Bible says whether we or an angel, according to some, when you look and study other religions, there was a religion called Mormonism. The Mormons are. They said they received their gospel, their last testament, by an angel, Moroni, and said, I come to present this last testament. How can they say that when the Bible just told us right here that even if an angel come with another gospel, I don't care what Joseph Smith said he heard that day. I know, let God's word be true and every man a liar. Cry aloud and spare not. Lift your voice like a trumpet. Stop stepping back all the time when somebody said, well, no, this, I'm, I don't want to hurt nobody's feelings. Tell the truth. The truth is what's going to set you free. Jesus is that truth. So these people, these Galatians, these Gauls, what happened? They found themselves deviating from the blueprint of God. So Paul brings it to their remembrance, reminding them. He 
He said at one point, I believe in the third chapter, he said, you're foolish. You know that? Can you imagine sitting in Paul's congregation? You foolish Galatians, who have bewitched you? Who have bewildered you? Who put a hex on you? Who's got you convinced that you're better off walking in legalism? Don't you know where the spirit of the Lord is? There is what? Liberty. Walk in your liberty. Walk in your freedom. So that you're not bound by legalism and tradition. Stop worrying about what people are wearing. Start worrying about whether they got makeup or not. Or with their toes sticking out of the front of their shoe. That toe might need some air. There's a way that seemeth right. The Bible said, but the end thereof is what? Death. Death. The truth of the gospel is in the essence of love. She said, what are the greatest two commandments? Love the Lord thy God. Heart, mind, soul, and strength. Otherwise, with your entire being. Second from this, he says, love who? Your neighbor as yourself. Love your neighbor. He said, if you do these two things, fare ye well. You're on the right path. But you got so many folk, they worry about crossing T's and dotting I's, but they don't understand the word love. Find themselves like Martha. Remember Mary and Martha? Martha was so worried about, well, I'm doing this and I'm doing that. Lord, don't you care that Mary ain't helping me? She ain't doing her part. But Jesus said, but Mary chose that which was needful. What did Mary do? Mary lowered herself, humbled herself to the feet of Jesus to hear the words that he spoke. Why was it she was so fascinated with his words? Because he has the words of eternal life. The love that she had for her Lord. But yet there are those that seem to be destitute of love. So therefore, they walk around criticizing instead of trying to lift people up. When we look here at the sixth chapter, somebody said, finally. <laughs> Thank God I'm not an expository preacher where I would go verse by verse. <laughs> but we see here in the sixth chapter, with all that the Galatians got wrong, Paul still recognized them as brethren. That's something else we need to remember. Sometimes we feel that because people don't worship with us, that they got a different father, that they're not our brethren. Not so. Not so. They may not be at the same level you are in your spiritual growth. That's still your brother, still your sister. But instead of talking about where they're not, when was the last time you incurred? I thank God for what he's doing in you. I see the growth. I see the difference. Sometimes if we can just use a word of encouragement, that inspire a person to press even the more. Why is it so difficult for us to encourage and to speak those things that are positive? No, I don't see you as the alcoholic no more. I see you as somebody who want to be drunk in the spirit. Hallelujah. No, I don't see you as that person that used to be promiscuous. I just see somebody who's in love with Jesus. Recognize those things that are positive in those people and speak life in those things. Don't you know he said life and death is in the tongue? As long as you keep recognizing them for what they used to be, all you do is keep fueling whatever demons are working in them. 
but begin to speak life and call those things that are not as though they were and watch God rise them up that they be the spiritual giants that he predestined them to be. Start talking to them like, I see you as people of faith. I see you as people of power. I see you as somebody in God. I see the potential of what God is doing here. I see you as a conqueror and more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. I see you as somebody that know how to press into your change. Go and say, Lord, I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. So we understand something. Just because people are not here in this edifice with us or in this ministry with us, they still are brethren. As long as they got the Holy Ghost, they are our brothers and sisters. If they don't have the Holy Ghost, we say it's time for you to come into the family. There's a process called adoption and you don't have to go to social services to get it done. The adoptions of sons. Read it sometime when you got extra time. The Bible goes on to tell us here as a reference here in the book of St. Luke. St. Luke, the ninth chapter. Just want to read these two verses. Verse 49 and verse 50. The Bible says, and John answered and said, Master, talking to Jesus, we saw one casting out devils in thy name. And we forbade him. Because he don't follow us, Jesus. We told him he need to cut it out. Stop casting out. You don't follow us. But then Jesus said unto him, forbid him not. For he that is not against us is what? Is for us. In other words, he said they are still a part of us. They still doing the same work as us. You can't do the work all by yourself. As anointed as we believe our ministry to be, the Bible Church of Christ can't do this ministry by itself. It requires us understanding the process that we call an economical movement. Where we come together with other Christian brethren. I'm sorry, I forgot I'm in the South Bronx. I'm not talking about an economical. Economical is a different word. It has nothing to do with money. We ain't trying to ask nobody to sow nothing. But in other words, we put our different sign and say we are all brethren in the faith. How can we come together collectively? We understand that your ministry is a ministry of deliverance. And the teaching of the Holy Ghost, but maybe they have a ministry where there's a mighty moving of healing. Or maybe they have a ministry where there's a mighty move of prophecy. Where if we came together, imagine how much stronger we'd be. Imagine how much the enemy would be upset about that. Don't matter what the ethnicity is. It don't matter where they're located geographically on the map. But we come together and we draw strength one from each other. The Bible said there was a time when Moses dealing with Israel in the process of the exodus and, and their mission and their journeying, you know, on their way to a promised land that the people began to complain and they murmured through the whole process. They got tired of eating manna. They wanted meat. And Moses got to the point he was just so vexed. He said, I can't do this by myself. And he began to communicate to God about it. So God had him to have 70 men. And the Lord allowed them while they were in the tabernacle. So Numbers, the 10th chapter, or 11th, somewhere around there. And the Bible said that when they were in the tabernacle, those 70 began to prophesy. What happened? God said, I'm going to take the spirit that's in you and I'm going to put it also in them. So this way that they'll be in one accord with you and the same power of myself that's in you will also be in them. So you're not working by yourself. I remember Bishop Roy Bryan Sr. saying, no one man is an island. We need each other. And the Bible lets us know in that passage that when the power of God came, they began to prophesy. And when the prophesying ceased, and as they began to depart from the tabernacle, to continue to prophesy. 
And the word says that Joshua, it bothered him. Oh, we need to forbid them from prophesying. Well, said, what are you talking about, boy? He said, I would that all of them prophesy. As long as they're giving God the glory and giving God the praise. He said, then that's more that they're able to help me with. Remember, we are not in competition with one another. So Moses told Joshua, he said, there's no reason to be jealous. There's no reason to be envious because of how the spirit of God is moving on them. It's to our benefit. We have to come together that we might do the many exploits that God wants the church to do. So in chapter 6, did I start that yet? Oh, yeah, I did say brethren. Some beginners better than no beginning. But he still recognized them of being the family of God or the household of faith. He said, if a man be overtaken in a fault. Now, to be overtaken is to be caught by surprise. It's not something that's premeditated. There are some people, when it comes to sin that's in their life, it was premeditated. In other words, while they're in here right now, they throw up their hands. Yes, Lord, I love you. I praise you. Singing the songs and everything else. Worship. But they're already planning on what they're going to do this evening. That's nobody in here, I take it. We pray that's nobody in here. That's premeditating. Even in our judicial system, when a crime is premeditated, it carries a heavier consequence than one when a person fell into a fault or overtaken by a fault. We understand according to the scripture, but if that was to happen, a brother was overtaken or it seemed that they were seized unaware in a fault, in misconduct, in a transgression, it seemed like they deviated. There was a lapse concerning them walking in truth or in righteousness. He said, ye, talking to the church, which are spiritual. To be spiritual is to be led by the Spirit. The Bible lets us know in Romans 8 chapter that as the sons of God, what qualifies us to be the sons of God when we're led by what? The Spirit of God. Or rather led by who? The Spirit of God. We also see in the previous chapter of chapter 5 of Galatians, verse 16, he said, this I say then that you do what? Say it again. Walk in the spirit, and ye shall not do what? So you have an obligation. You got a mandate that you can't do this the way you want to. Forget about that old Burger King mentality, having it your way. The scripture begins to say that if you walk in the spirit, then you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So if you're spiritual, you're walking in the spirit. Verse 18 of chapter 5. But if you be, what? Led of the spirit. Once again, if you're spiritual, you're walking in the spirit. You're being led in the spirit. And then in verse 22, he says, but the fruit of the spirit, which is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance against such there is no law. It's interesting when he talked about the fruit of the spirit. It had nothing to do with how much you shout. How many tongues you speak. How long you prayed. How much tithe the offering you put in the plate. But the emphasis was on a, a behavior. On a character. On a mindset. On an attitude. A way you carry yourself. A way you present yourself, that's what makes one spiritual. A behavior as becometh holiness. A behavior that is like Jesus himself. Be like Christ. Put away the attitude. Put away the foolish jesting. Put away the promiscuity. Put away the addictions. Whether it be prescribed medications or illicit drugs, 
And don't say, well, they legalize it so I can do it. Just because the world says it's all right don't mean it's right by God's standard. A little leaven will leaven the lump. So if they go ahead and legalize crack or meth, you're going to go start smoking that too? You're talking about those who are spiritual. I want you to understand spiritual is just not what we look like on Sunday morning. Spiritual is the real you in the week. Are people able to approach you? Or are you standoffish? I hope there's nobody in here. Well, I don't want to go talk to them because, you know, I, they say if you lay with dogs, you get fleas. What are you saying? I'll say like Jesus said unto James and John. You don't know what spirit ye are of. Imagine you walking with Jesus and in the wrong spirit. Casting out devils. Laying hands on people being healed. You preaching, but you're still in the wrong spirit. And Jesus said, the Son of Man came not to destroy men's lives, but that men might be saved. You got to have a passion for souls. If you're calling yourself spiritual and you lack passion for souls and compassion and empathy and sympathy for souls, then you're not spiritual at all. You're religious. There ain't no room for religious folk. Paul said that when he came to the knowledge of Christ, it was the Lord who separated him from the Jews' religion and brought him into relationship. Out of religion, into relationship. And by doing so, you know how to treat all people from all manners of life with love and respect. Sowing a seed everywhere you go, hoping that a harvest will come one day. They had a story they used to read to us in elementary school about a guy named Johnny Appleseed. <laughs> Everywhere Johnny went, see, he was trying to be green back then. He dropped the seed, hoping that one day a harvest would come up. He didn't have to stay and wait for the tree to come up. Everywhere he went, he just dropping the apple seeds. When was the last time you were able to go in any environment and just drop the seed of God's word? Knowing that I may not be the one to come back and water it. I may not be the one to come back to fertilize it. But that's right, Lord. You told me I'm not doing this by myself. So although I may plant, but another will come by and water. And the one that's watering, I'm not worried about if he try to take credit or not. Because at the end of the day, the one that planteth is nothing. Neither is the one that watereth anything. Because it's God who's going to give the increase. We're just fellow laborers working together in the kingdom. That's what it's about. We have to be unified. But it starts with us being able to restore. Restoration. When I think about that word restore, we still in the first verse. Y'all know that? <laughs> Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fall, ye which are spiritual do what? Restore. How? Such a one in what kind of spirit? Meekness. Meekness. Considering who? <laughs> Lest thou also be tempted. Other words, you have a tender consideration. There's a forbearance. When you're talking about meekness, meekness is not weakness, although they rhyme. But it's really power that's restrained. Power that's under control. I may have the authority to do or say, but I know how to walk in the tender compassion and the mercies of Jesus Christ. So a smoking flax I don't put out. A bruised reed I will not break. But I learn how to be all things to all people that I might win some unto Christ and to the kingdom. Restore such a one. Regardless of how bad it hurts, 
regardless of how hard the offense may have been. You have the war and a spirit of forgiveness. Those things that were old, leave them behind. And say, let's press together towards that prize in Christ. Forgetting of those things that are behind and working collectively as we move forward. There are those that want to be back here with us. But before God bring people back amongst us, we have to work out the issues that we recognize that are still there. Because what will happen, the problem won't be with them, the problem will be with us. Because we have the attitude of the mentality of the older son in the story of the prodigal son. Remember his attitude. Why you let him back, Dad? He spent all his money on riotous living. Why you let him back? He was a whoremonger. People say, whoremonger, what's that? That's the younger folk asking that question. So, because they got to a point they abbreviated as call a hoe. <laughs> Not a garden too. They were out there, spreading his stuff around, wasted, all, wasted his portion of the inheritance. But Lord, you allowed him, Father, you allowed him to come back? And then when he come back, you said, go kill the fatty calf. Not Mabel out there, I've been waiting for her. Don't kill that cow. <laughs> then you want to give him the best robe and to my putting a ring on the finger? I don't understand it. I did everything that was right, but they, they left and want to come back. Why are you allowing them to come back? Because God don't judge things as we judge things. Because God is spiritual. To be spiritual is to be overwhelmed with compassion and love and mercy. Be more like God and stop being like your religious ancestors. That the love of Christ radiate from your life. So that we can do the many exploits that God wants us to do. I told you before, there's no demon. No man that can hinder the work that God portioned us. But we can hinder it. We hinder ourselves. Become our own stumbling block. Instead of saying, I'm ready to move out of the way, God. And let you be God. You do it, Lord. I don't know why things happened the way they did. But all I can speak is as this moment. We can't look back. All we can do is go forward. One chapter's closed, and the next chapter is beginning. We have to take this chapter collectively and go forth and say, Lord, not my will, but whose will? Are you ready for God's will to be done? Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. I'm going to come to a close here. The Bible says concerning the one, the elder son in that story of the prodigal son, the father said, look, all that's mine is yours. You've been here all the time. But this is your brother who was dead and is now alive. Look at God's grace, his mercy. And sometimes you'll find that what Paul would do and also Peter, they would bring it back to your remembrance. Remember, there was a time where you weren't all together. There was a time that you reveled just like everyone else out there in the world. There was a one time where you had your nose in places that it should not be. There were times where you were saved this Sunday, backslid by Monday, then came back again two weeks later, wanted to be saved again, then went back in the world, then came back your head, somebody had to bring out the buckets, the trash cans, and the paper towel.
But God was long-suffering towards us. And then we had the revelation, there are none righteous, no, not one. But we have the mercy and the grace of God. Amen. Once again, we thank God for the word of God. Amen. We pray that you would reread the scriptures. Amen. As you go forth throughout your week. Um, at this time, we're going to have our announcements by our sister, Tony King. And right after our announcements, we're going to ask our brothers to prepare for our offering. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord again. Praise the Lord. It's truly a blessing to see each and every one of you one more time. I know we have quite a few visitors amongst us today. Can you please stand? We won't ask you to give your name and who invited you, but we just like to welcome you to the Bible Church of Christ. God bless each and every one of you. We thank you for fellowshipping with us today, and our doors are always open to you. For the benefit of our visitors, these are the days and times for services here at the Bible Church of Christ. Sunday school begins at 10 a.m. here in the chapel as well as on Zoom. Sunday worship service begins at 12 p.m., in the chapel as well as on Zoom. We have Wednesday night prayer service, which begins at 7 p.m. on Zoom. The call-in number for our Zoom services is 929-205-6099. And the Zoom ID is 325-896-624. We have Friday night joy service, which begins at 7 p.m. on our YouTube channel, as well as in the sanctuary. All are welcome to our Friday night uh, joy services. We have midday prayer here at the Bible Church of Christ headquarters location on Wednesdays from 2, excuse me, from 12 to 2 p.m. here in our chapel. Once again, that's Wednesdays from 12 to 2 p.m. We have a bookstore located on the main level of our building. The store hours are Monday through Saturday from 10 to 6 p.m. and on Sundays immediately after our services. Our website for the bookstore is the bccbookstore.com. The Bible Church of Christ has a theological institute located here at headquarters. Our uh, classes are for new converts as well as for advanced studies. To learn more about the theological institute, visit the website bccti.org. And to learn more about the ministry of the Bible Church of Christ, visit our website thebiblechurchofchrist.org. Our in-person classes for the Bible school have resumed in the building. So if uh, those students that are in the Theological Institute, you can now come back into the building. Tuition payments can be made in our register's office located on the main level of the building, or you can pay them on the Theological Institute website. Once again, that is BCCTI. 
final payments for our sight and sound trip on May the 21st is due on March the 20th. I said the 15th prior, it's now March the 20th. As you know, today is our celebration of the co-naming of the street for our late pastor, Bishop Roy Bryant Sr. We will have the revealing after service as well as a reception following in our dining room. Our minister, Abraham Jones, will give you more information pertaining to this. Please be reminded that masks are required in the building and must be worn at all times. There is no eating or drinking permitted in our chapel. Children are not allowed to play with pens, pencils, or markers while in the chapel. Children are also to be accompanied by an adult when entering into the bookstore. Tithes and offering envelopes are available. If you need an envelope, our deacons will pass out one at that time. Please write all your information clearly on these envelopes. Please include first and last names. You can also pay tithes and offerings through PayPal as well as tithe.ly. Our prayer list is rather lengthy. However, I'm just going to add those, call those names that were recently added to the prayer list. Our sister Eartha's son, Achmel, our sister Arthelene's grandson, Jalen, who was in a car accident over the weekend. Our sister, Teresa McMillan, is in our service today. <laughs> She's in the back, she waved. And our sister, Sonia Brown, is also in our midst today. Our sister Lydia Samuel is back in our midst. Good to see you. Praise the Lord. Saints, that lets us know that our prayers are being heard. So keep on praying. Don't get discouraged and know that God will answer and in his time and in his perfect way. We have something new at the Bible Church of Christ. This is the first copy of The Voice, which is the new monthly magazine for the Bible Church of Christ. You will get one before the service is over. It'll tell you all about what's going on in the Bible Church of Christ. So we thank God for our wonderful and amazing pastor, Bishop Daru Bryant who would put this all together for us. I tell you, I'm so proud of our pastor. It gives me so much joy to be under this young man of God. You just don't understand we have been so blessed since he has come back to the ministry. All of this that's going on here at the Bible Church of Christ is because. I just pray that we as members of the Bible Church of Christ, ministers and lay persons, that we will rally behind our pastor. He's doing a whole lot and he needs each and every one of us. So I beseech each and every one, you know the gifts and the talents that God has placed in you. Let God use you 
Speak to the man of God and let him know what you're capable of doing. No more time for us to be sitting on our hands. No more times for us crawling, crossing our arms and crossing our legs. It's time for us to get busy. All of this, he can't do all of this by himself. He needs each and one of you, each and every one of us. I praise God for him and our lovely sister Darlene Bryant. You know, I didn't plan on saying all of this, but God knows. I love you all. Continue to pray for me as I continue to pray for you. God bless you. God, for all of our announcements. Um, amen. At this time, we're going to hear from our minister, Abraham Jones. Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord again. Amen. I know that the hour is drawing nigh. Amen. Uh, and so uh, just real very quickly, uh, the plan is that immediately after the service is, is over, uh, we will then have a sh very, very, very short uh, recess, if you will, allow those who need to to go take care of their needs and come right back. Uh, we are uh, insisted on starting exactly at 2 o'clock, but that break will also allow uh, further seating of some of our invited guests and dignitaries and local elected officials. It will also allow enough time for the programs to be distributed to you, as Sister Tony said in, in The Voice, the new magazine. In that magazine uh, 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 is the program for uh, uh, the 2 o'clock program. And so, uh, again, uh, those uh, who need to use the restroom, hurry. <laughs> Amen, because we want to start exactly at 2. We're real very, very, very thankful and excited about what is about to take place. So God bless everyone. Amen. At, at this time, we're going to take up an offering. Amen. So we're asking the brothers and the deacons to move very quickly. Amen. A manila envelope to put your offering. We're asking that you would raise your hand high so that one of the brothers can see your hand and they can give you an envelope. And in that envelope, you will put your offering and you will, um, once you're directed by the ushers, you will come and place your offering in the bowl. Amen. The Jesus in me loves the Jesus in you. The Jesus in me loves the Jesus in you. Your reason, your reason, your reason, your reason to love. The Jesus in me loves the Jesus in you. The Jesus in me loves the Jesus in you. Your reason, your reason, your reason, your reason to love. The Jesus in me loves the Jesus in you. The Jesus in me loves the Jesus in you. Your reason. Your reason, 
You're easy to love. Amen. At this time, we're asking everyone just to please stand. The ushers in the back, they'll be assisting you to um, come down with your offering. Amen. And we're asking that you come cheerfully. Amen. With your offering and your tithes. Your easy. Your easy. You're easy to love. The Jesus in me loves the Jesus in you. The Jesus in me loves the Jesus in you. Your easy. in me loves the Jesus in you the Jesus in me loves the Jesus in you so easy The Jesus in you, the Jesus in you, your easy, your easy, your easy, your easy to love. The Jesus in me loves the Jesus in you. The Jesus in me loves the Jesus in you so easy. Your easy. Your easy. Your easy to love. The Jesus in me loves the Jesus in you. The Jesus in me loves the Jesus in you. Your easy. Your easy. Your easy. Your easy to love. The Jesus in me loves the Jesus in you. The Jesus.